I'm really happy to see that now we have a good screening uh, for lung cancer. For very many years, there have been studies uh, starting from the 70s, eight, and then 80s through 90s, there was no evidence that screening patients for lung cancer did anything in terms of survival. In other words, if you were a smoker and you had a chest x-ray and you would check your sputum, um, there was no evidence that that would catch the cancer early or, or prolong your life. But now we do. And uh, we have a very solid uh, lung cancer screening program here in Brooklyn. Um, you, to qualify, you need to be between ages 50 and 75 and to have a significant uh, history of smoking. And it's a simple, low-dose CT scan, uh, which can literally save your life. We've had patients together, actually, um, at Mount Sinai, Brooklyn. We have a thoracic surgeon and a whole crew of pulmonologists. And um, we've had some patients, I've had some patients, who went through a screening program where if they're in the age range you describe, they go for this quick CT scan. Very easy, very simple. The CAT scan is minutes in the room. Mm -hmm. And they can find these little nodules. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And sometimes they have to be <laughs> removed. And sometimes these nodules harbor cancer. And Absolutely. they're tiny. They're, they're the size of uh, an eraser on the head mm -hmm, of a pencil. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's incredible. This is incredible. And um, I think it saved a lot of lives. You mentioned the fact that nowadays people do not have to cross the river to go in Manhattan and uh, get state-of-the-art care. And I really think that's true. It's. Um, and we made this possible at Mount Sinai because we have some uh, good oncologists who know what they're doing, but also because we are in constant communication with what we call the disease uh, groups, um, bladder cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, where we present the patients at tumor board where you have the, the world specialists, you know, uh, looking at the data, coming together with a plan, and then instituting it locally. That, that, that's a great point that you bring up. And for our viewers today, there is something called tumor board. And you know, when I was first in medical school and they said, hey, can you present this case for tumor board? I was scared. I thought I had to go walk in front of a board of people. <laughs> I didn't know what tumor board was. It was my, my, one of my first rotations. Um, I was actually at Maimonides Medical Center where they um, had a cancer center that I was working at as a student. And they said, well, why don't you present your patient to tumor board? It sounded like this terrible, scary meeting where you walk in and there were judges sitting at a table. But in fact, what Dr. Balan is referring to for our viewers today to explain this to you is in a room on any given day at any hospital in the city, any comprehensive hospital, there is a tumor board going on. And there might be a tumor board for lung cancer or a tumor board for colon cancer, where mm -hmm. they present the patient. And we spoke a little bit a few minutes ago about individualized care. And the doctor will present Mrs. Smith or Mr. Jones and talk about their case, <clears throat> talk about, you know, is he a marathon runner or is he someone who's stuck in bed? Is this someone who's in good health or bad health? Mm -hmm. What did we find? And the doctors, and there could be dozens in the room, will put out all what they think is the best plan for this patient. So that while there are guidelines and there are algorithms out there, the care still becomes individualized, and they try to find the best choice, an evidence-based mm -hmm. choice. And here in Brooklyn, you do that yes. for all the different types of cancers, and the patients are presented to experts. And so you know, when the patient meets with a cancer doctor, and I, I was surprised to learn this. I had, I, when I first worked at Sloan Kettering, I had seen how this goes on as well, where one doctor comes in the room, and then another doctor comes in the room. And here in Brooklyn, you're putting this team together mm -hmm so folks don't have to cross the river. So once a patient is presented for tumor board, say they went for a screening test and we find a colon cancer, what's the next steps locally? What can we do here locally? We find a colon cancer that needs to be removed. Say they have to go for some chemotherapy after. How can we facilitate this without crossing a river? Sure. Uh, just to add to the idea of tumor board, it's the only place where you can have a 360 degree view of, of everything. Because at the tumor board, you don't have just oncologists there, but you have people who read films, the radiologists, you have the radiation specialists who give the radiation, you have the surgeons, you have the pathologists who read the slides and make uh, the diagnosis. All diagnoses. the doctors just come Everybody. together for, for the patient, for the sake of the patient. It's it really a beautiful thing. It's an extraordinary... Um, it saves time. Just imagine that the patient would have to ping pong between different specialists. 
And it also puts everybody on the same page because you have your own angle and somebody else has another angle. The gastroenterologist will have another angle. And that's the only way to get a comprehensive view. Right, so the patient who comes in with a new diagnosis of colon mm -hmm. cancer, here locally, you can put the team together where the surgery can be discussed and arranged at the tumor board. The type of chemo that may need to be done after can be arranged, or the radiation therapy mm -hmm. can be arranged mm -hmm. locally, comprehensively, where the patient is now presented with a packet or a plan, and they, ne they never even saw this meeting take place. <laughs> right. It's sad because I wish patients <laughs> had seen this because it, it would give even more appreciation for what goes on behind the scenes. It's not just the office visit. It really right. is incredible. Right. You mentioned the colorectal cancer patient. Uh, when somebody is diagnosed with colon cancer, uh, that's done by you, by the gastroenterologist, um, then we have this tumor board, you have the surgeon, pathologist, the radiologist, the medical oncologist, and then uh, within just days, you have the medical oncologist see the patient, you have the radiation in case the patient needs radiation, the chemotherapy can start as soon as the surgery is done. Uh, we have, we're building in, the, in, in Brooklyn here uh, a GA Center of Excellence uh, where your group works with Mount Sinai and with the, with the surgeons and the medical oncologists to make a team and to have the patients be seen by everybody in record time. What, what Dr. Balan is referring to is what we call in medicine comprehensive care mm -hmm. or integrated care where as a gastroenterologist I can do a colonoscopy. I find what I know to be a colon cancer in the patient in my office at 9 a.m. on a Monday. At 9.15, I have a text message out to, say, Dr. Balan or one of the cancer specialists mm -hmm. here in Brooklyn. I have a text message out to one of the colorectal surgeons um, where they now have robotic colorectal surgery mm -hmm. at Mount Sinai, Brooklyn on Kings Highway. So the patient now, I've got text messages out to all the experts locally and so what he's referring to is comprehensive cancer care in the same zip code that the patient lives, which is, which is fabulous, 2018. This is what we should be offering not only here in Brooklyn, but everywhere in this country, because we are so advanced now in medicine that why not have locally the right care? And so we've done this together for some patients. Absolutely. Even recently, and it's fabulous because all the doctors communicate easily. Mm -hmm. We know each other. We're local. We're Brooklyn people. Yep, And Brooklyn has needed this for a long time. So let's move on here. We talked a little bit about prevention of cancer. Patients, we talked about chemotherapy. It's changing. It is not what we thought of in the 80s, 70s, 60s, where every cancer requires brutal chemotherapy, where the hair falls out, people turn pale, they look sickly. There are some new changes, there are some new developments. Tell us about some of the latest and greatest in cancer care. Excited to do so. Um, in, um, I, I, I mentioned this to my students um, 75 years ago on December 2nd, and it is 75 years ago, it was 1943. Uh, in Bari, during the Second World War, there was a bombardment of a ship that had a secret load of uh, nitrogen mustard. And uh, the dead underwent autopsies, and uh, they noticed, uh, and Goodman and Gilman, who wrote the, uh, the textbook of pharmacology, were on this, noticed that the lymphocytes disappeared in these patients. And it's the first time they asked themselves, maybe we should use nitrogen mustard you know, to treat patients rather right. than and to the, bomb places. And the lymphocytes, for our viewers, are a part of the immune system. They are a white blood cell. Mm -hmm. And so these folks were exposed to this chemical and they found that right. part of the lymphocytes disappeared, which led them now to? To the development of chemotherapy to fight leukemia. By accident. They found this by More accident, More or less by basically. accident, yes. But the fact that the, the birth of chemotherapy is linked to such a humanitarian disaster, it, it tells you that chemotherapy does not have a good name and for the right reason, you know. Because it's, it, it's, it's tough. It's non-specific. Right. Um, it attacks the DNA. That's the fundamental principle behind any kind of chemotherapy. Um, and then you end up with all kinds of adverse reactions. Because the chemo doesn't know, or at least the chemos mm -hmm. that we have been using in the past, they don't know exactly where they're going. They're affecting the cancer, but they're also affecting the body. Right, right. But now you have targeted therapies. 
Targeted therapies uh, were uh, studied in the 90s. I think 2001, the first one was uh, the Gleevec, was uh, imatinib, was uh, discovered. Um, targeted therapies means that you, you create a medication that looks for a very specific target only on the cancer cell. Um, I sometimes joke that there was a movie, the, um, uh, there was a uh, top secret when there's a brawl in a bar between the partisans, the French partisans and the, the Nazis. And somebody comes and starts shooting left and right uh, with bullets and only the Nazis fall. That's the concept behind targeted therapy. So give the medication, but the medication will selectively um, kill only the cell with a very specific target on it. And we're very excited in the, in the early 2000s when these came out, um, Erlotinib, Imatinib, all these Ibs. Um, and uh, we had uh, good results. They're much better tolerated. There's, they're not as targeted as we wish they were, but infinitely more so than the chemotherapy. And we're getting there also now with immunotherapy. Yes. And some of these are not chemotherapeutic <laughs> agents. These medicines don't always have to be IV. They don't have to be shots. Some of them are pills now, in fact, correct? Yes. So patients don't have to fear that a diagnosis of cancer means an IV infusion or terrible chemotherapies like they've seen in movies. Some of them, and many of them now, are targeted, and we're getting even more directly, directly, directly aimed at the specific site, sometimes by just a pill. Yes. We have a minute or so to wrap up here. We talked about prevention. It is important, so important for our viewers to see a doctor, to get a colonoscopy, to get cervical cancer screening, mm -hmm. mammography. If you're a smoker, stop smoking. If you're a certain type of smoker in a certain age, get a CAT scan that's been designed to detect lung cancer early. Then, God forbid you find something, cancer care is available locally. There are infusion centers. People don't have to be in hospitals. So I want to thank you for coming here today to explain this because Brooklyn, unfortunately, has been underserved for some time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is more cancer in Brooklyn. But the folks watching today need to know that the cancer care is available locally and that they can prevent cancer, in fact, by seeing a doctor like you, seeing their primary care, and really pursuing a healthy lifestyle. And you know, we talk about it all the time, stopping. Smoking. So thank you for yes. coming on today. Thank it's, you so much. It's really an honor to have you on and, and what you're doing here locally with Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai, Brooklyn on Kings Highway to bring such comprehensive expert care to, to the residents of Brooklyn is, is amazing and we're happy to have you. Thank you. It's a privilege and I'm humbled. To our guests today, thank you for your interest in the show and for watching MedCast Plus. We invite you to continue to watch to become more involved and educated on your health. I invite you to visit our website at medcastplus.com and check out our tools and connect with us on social media. You can also call us at 718-510-2103. I'm Dr. Jack Braha. Stay healthy, be well, stay safe, Brooklyn. Goodbye. <laughs>